Thanks for staying with us. It's now time to look at uh, the fact that Ghana is exploring the possibility of importing fuel from Nigeria's newly completed Dangote refinery to secure a more stable and potentially cost-effective supply of petroleum products. As one of Africa's largest refineries with a capacity of 650,000 barrels per day, the Dangote refinery offers Ghana a regional alternative to global suppliers, which often subject the country to volatile price shifts. This potential partnership aligns with Ghana's strategy to diversify fuel sources, reduce dependency on the global oil market, and stabilize domestic fuel prices, marking a promising step towards enhanced economic collaboration between the two West African countries. To discuss this with me is Mr. Shegun Shokweton, Chairman, Accountability, Kanda and Transparency Network. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay, um, Ghana is exploring uh, the possibility of, ex of importing uh, the, the fuel from Nigeria, from specifically Dangote uh, fuel, uh, refinery, which is like the largest in Africa right now. But let's start from home. Uh, we're being told that uh, the Dangote uh, fuel, the Dangote petrol, um, 500, or 500 million liters of fuel remain untapped amid Nigeria's 50 million daily consumption. First of all, we do not know if the data of 50 million is correct because maybe it has come at a time when Nigerians have parked their cars and they're no longer using generators. So I don't know if it's a fair assessment of the consumption level of Nigeria at this time. But this is what is happening. People are not accessing the Dangote fuel and his 500 million liters is still there untapped while we're talking about other countries exploring ways to come get it? Well, um, yeah, it, it's, um, it, it's quite a strange thing that is going on with this whole Dangote refinery um, situation. Uh, as, as a country, you know, we, we've struggled for decades with um, local refining capacity for petroleum products um with with the very now infamous uh, perennially uh, malfunctioning uh, government owned refineries and and i think that everybody has always said it's almost become like a mythical mythical thing or an urban legend oh one day once we have local refining capacity all our problems will go away with regards to petroleum supply and pricing um, now we have a, 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 a refinery owned by a Nigerian, located in Nigeria, um, with with capacity to handle all of our of our uh, consumption needs as a country, and <laughs> we're still importing. And that local refiner is now looking abroad for markets. Um, it's not just Ghana. There have been quite a number of uh, uh, presidents, we've seen it in the media, have visited the refinery, uh, Dangote refinery, to, to explore the possibility of buying from, from them. You know, so it's, it's, it's quite intriguing to find that in spite of the availability of um, um, this local product, locally refined product, which according to uh, Dangote, and um, I think according to some independent sources as well, is actually one of the highest quality products you can find anywhere in the world. Um, with regards to sulfur content and all the other parameters for uh, determining the quality of uh, petrol, pet, uh, pet PMS. Um, and yet, in spite of that, um, in spite of the cost savings with regards to um, shipping costs, you know, and all of that, we still, we're still importing. Um, the NNPC has removed themselves as middlemen, you know, from 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 the supply chain of PMS from Dangote to Nigerians. Um, and I said everybody can go there and buy. And instead of going there to buy, people are importing. So you've just got to wonder what is going on. You know, it, it's it's one of the most mysterious things, and it just goes to show how big a problem we have in Nigeria with regards to how things work and how things run. It would appear as though um, good sense, good economic sense, good business sense 
uh, business business um, indicators, business factors, are no longer the driving um, uh, factors for making decisions with regards to something as nationally important as this. Uh, it's 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 a, it's an absolute mystery, and it just begins to look as if all of the um, conspiracy theories with regards to uh, why our refineries have never worked were actually true. Because here we are now, we've got a refinery that works and nobody wants to buy from them. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's strange. Hmm. Uh, well, you, you just said maybe a good economic sense, a business sense is not being applied. If it is being applied, to whose advantage will it be? I think that's the question we'll be asking ourselves. Because if it's being applied, maybe Nigerians will enjoy. But these people or this uh, group of people that are making sure that they continue to import, will they also enjoy as Nigerians will be enjoying? Because that's the question. To whose advantage will the good economic sense uh, be? Is it the Nigerians or the people who are making us to perpetually stay in this condition? Because if you can answer that question, well, good for you, <laughs> because that is where we are right uh, now. I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very good question, and I think that that is precisely where government is supposed to come in. And this is why this whole thing is a mystery to me. Um, I mean, you go all over the world and you find that government plays a regulating role um, in business activities to ensure that the national interest, the common good, um, is, is, um, is, 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 is the primary, fundamental, underlying of reason for anything that anybody is going to do within the business community in those countries. So, for example, you, you go to the United States and you've got very strong antitrust laws that prevent um, large corporates from, 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 from basically uh, swallowing up smaller organizations and killing competition. The government will not allow it. And as a result of the intervention of the American antitrust um, um, agencies, Microsoft was compelled to 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 desist from um, a lot of the practices that they were um, engaging it engaging in about 10 15 years ago and some of those this these actions resulted in the rise of Apple that we now see today you know uh, that that's the job of government so the question one must ask is look it, it might not make good economic sense to even the marketers, mm. you know, um, to, to buy from Dangote, maybe there are some underlying other um, factors that we, we can't think about that is making them go abroad and incur um, large shipping costs to bring this product. Let's not forget that Dangote is getting petrol, sorry, crude oil at international prices mm. from Nigeria, um, and they're also importing crude oil. Right? So if the government is able to make crude oil available to Dangote, um, even if you say it's at international prices, but he's buying it in Naira, right? So which means that there's some saving for Dangote with regards to the, the sourcing of crude. There will be a pass-on effect on the cost saving to the marketers, which will then be passed on to Nigerians. Um, what's happened with all of that? Where is the role of the regulator? Where is the role of government? Where is the role of the Minister of um, Petroleum? Um, where is the role of the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources? What's government doing to ensure that the national interest, you know, um, is served? The government cannot just hands off this. It, it, it all looks absolutely strange, what is happening right now. Look, the, 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 the savings from the impact of us, all of us in Nigeria buying from Dangote, the impact that will have on the exchange rate alone is reason for even the CBN governor to have a vested interest on a national level in ensuring that everybody buys from Dangote. The CBN is supposed to be screaming to high heavens. You can't have a refinery working in Nigeria and we're still providing dollars, you know, to, 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 to marketers to import this product. Look at what is happening with the exchange rate. It's losing value again. In the official market, exchange rate is now 1,635, 1,640. In the parallel market, we're at 1,750 naira. 
to the dollar. Pressure on the dollar is simply too much, and it's affecting everything else. It's still continuing to drive inflation. So it is in the interest of the government, of the Minister of Finance, of the Minister of Petroleum Resources, of the, the CBN governor, um, and, and a, a, a retinue of other uh, government um, parastatals and agencies to ensure that we buy from Dangote so that we can also gain the benefits apart from the five price at the pump. Just there are so many other benefits that Nigeria stands to gain by you know leveraging on the availability of these products in Nigeria. Uh, why is government standing aloof? Why why is the president not saying anything about this? It's absolutely strange, and it would again. I have to end by you know this thought by saying it would appear as though the conspiracy theories may very well be true. Why are we still importing? What's happened with the Malta Malta thing? You know, and um, the linkage link, linkages with Oando and all of that, you know, those things were, were flying around some months ago and people were laughing it off. You know, I've got friends in that sector who said it's absolutely senseless for anybody to believe any of those things. It makes no sense. It's ridiculous and so on and so forth. But here we are. What is happening with um, um, uh, between Dangote and the NNPC and the federal government and the marketers is what is, it makes no sense. It's absolutely ridiculous. Somebody's got to come out and explain to Nigerians why Dangote Refinery will be selling petrol to Ghana and not to Nigeria. Uh, I think it was uh, Dominican Republic or something, one Caribbean country, Caribbean country, for goodness sake, um, Mr. Agaji, came to Nigeria all the way from the Caribbeans to talk about buying petrol from Dangote Refineries. And we are going abroad to go and buy petrol. <laughs> it, it makes no sense. Somebody has got to explain this. I don't think the government, the president can't just stand aloof. We've got to demand answers because this has an impact on everybody. It's not just about the price of petrol. It's about the, the exchange rate of the Naira and the impact that that has on inflation and the entirety of the rest of the economy. Somebody has got to explain this to us. It makes no sense. Yeah. Even till now, I don't know if you know, but I, even till now, I don't know what really is the price that Dangote is ready to sell the, the product to Nigerian marketers? I, I still don't know till now. He just said what NNPCL said uh, was not true, and he didn't give us a price. I don't know whether he has given now. It is I that don't, uh, has not heard about that price. I don't know why everything is crowded, shrouded in secrecy and all that. But as we wrap up uh, briefly now, uh, let's just know uh, re let's just re-emphasize what this means to Nigeria if other countries are exploring ways to uh, the possibilities of coming to buy from us, which means uh, it will be to an advantage to them and we are not buying. What does it mean to the economy of Nigeria? I, I know you have said pockets of, of these uh, uh, consequences, but I'd like by way of emphasis for you to repeat them and add more if, you, if, there, if there is more to add. Uh, the, the, the most critical uh, benefit of buying Dangote petrol by Nigerians is the, is the impact it's going to have on the dollars. And I think that Nigerians need to understand this. Um, our import bill, which ranges from between 50 uh, billion US dollars to 60 billion US, US dollars, depending on which year you're looking at, 40% um, of that 50 billion Mr. Agaji, 40% of that is on refined petroleum products alone. Just imagine a market where 40% of the demand for FX disappears. Just imagine what that would do to the exchange rate. That for me, you know, you can look for a number of other benefits, even, you know, the cost at the petrol, at the, at the, at the pump, even though, like you say, we still don't know the price of uh, what, what Dangote is selling to marketers. They are, they are shrouding it in secrecy, you know, for reasons that you may claim to be obvious. But let's let's leave the price at the pump. Let's assume that we still continue to buy at 1,050 uh, 1, naira from NNPC or whatever the new price is, because they've just increased that again. Um, um, let's even leave that. Just the impact on FX alone, you know, the, the and what that will do to inflation and what that will do to um, um, government revenues, you know, the, the disposable income of Nigerians and all of that. It's, it's, um, it, 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 it's strange that we are not, as a country, that our government is not aggressively pursuing insistence on the purchase of PMS from Dangote. The government is the one that should be saying, excuse me, 
nobody is buying, nobody is importing this product anymore. As a protectionist policy, you know, if you produce something locally in your country, what all countries in the world do is that they protect the local industry, is that they use tariffs, even if you can't ban, because you say, oh, it's a democracy, free market, then you use tariffs, strong tariffs, to discourage people from importing. Our government just says, eh, anybody can buy from anywhere, it's your business. I mean, what kind of governance is that? It's absolutely strange what is going on. We've got to call it out. There's something going on beyond the ordinary. There's, it's clear that personal interests, vested interests are seriously at play. When you see something that makes no sense economically for the, for the majority, then it means it's making sense economically for just a few at the expense of the majority. Nigerians had better start screaming. Otherwise, you know, we, 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 Dangote is just another thing that just happened that we just celebrated for nothing. The man is going to continue to sell his PMS. He's, he's got, look, he's going to sell all over the world. You know, he, he won't have a problem. Okay. The problem is on us. So it, it's okay. about time that we, we demand accountability about this. Yeah, like, like you said, Nigerians should start screaming. So uh, we are right behind you, Mr. Shapwiton. <laughs> Your chairman, Accountability, <laughs> Candor and Transparency Network. CSOs are the, the ones that give us voices. And we are hoping that uh, we can hide behind you and do the needful. Since carrying placards and, and raising our voices has become so, so uh, dangerous that you could be locked up and you could be fined what your family and generations unborn may not be able to pay. Uh, but uh, we trust what the CSOs do. But this is how far we can go on the program today. Thank you so much, Mr. Shopperton, for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. We'll do our bit. We'll write letters. We'll demand accountability. We'll demand answers from the right authorities. I can right. promise you that. Thank you very much. We've been talking with Mr. Shegun Shokwiton, Chairman Accountability, Candor and Transparency Network. And this is where we wrap it up on the show this morning. We'd like to thank you for being a part of the show. And we hope to connect with you again tomorrow. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Thank you for being there.